prostate wide operation over the month of July. We see this as another really vital and important step forward in protecting women and children across South Australia. It's shameful, in fact, that with the levels of crime that we see in domestic violence is still occurring, but this operation by police is dedicated to improving the ongoing safety of women and children. Just to give you a background to the operation, we targeted 265 offenders and we attended 394 addresses across the state. So that's a significant amount of effort by over 400 police officers who surged into this operation over the month of July. 148 offences were detected, 80 people were arrested and 13 were reported. We conducted 46 bail compliance checks, we executed 21 warrants and we um, there were eight firearms prohibition order compliance searches and one school precaution was issued. 22 intervention orders were served. And just to give you an understanding of the kind of offences that I'm talking about, it included breaches of bail and intervention orders, assault, assault cause harm, aggravated assault, property damage, threat and unlawful violence, hinder police, unlawful imprisonment, stalking, strangulation, theft and aggravated serious criminal trespasses. So you can understand the impact that this has on the safety of women and children in South Australia. Now, if I just give you a couple of case studies to amplify what we're talking about. We arrested a 48 year old man from Ingle Farm for strangulation and aggravated serious criminal trespass, threats to kill and numerous assaults. He's appeared in the Adelaide Magistrates Court. He's been refused bail by the court and he's remanded in custody and will appear again on the 15th of October. Another case was a 66 year old man from Mawson Lakes and he was issued a stalking caution because he was we alleged he was maintaining surveillance of an ex-partner. So you can understand the seriousness of these offences and how they can quickly escalate um, into, sadly, really serious consequences such as death. And we're particularly concerned about preventative actions that we can take that can stop this behaviour escalating. We intend Operation Storm to be an ongoing operation. It'll be conducted every quarter throughout the state, every district, every LSA will participate. It gives us an opportunity to surge the resources we have to have this particular focus. We see this as an important and a necessary step forward for the protection of women and children. I'm happy to take any questions. The numbers that are on this release and that you've spoken about are quite staggering, especially considering it's only for the month of July. I mean, how disheartening is that to think that so much of this is happening in South Australia? It's shameful that the level of crime that's perpetrated on women and children is so high. One of the things that gives us some comfort is the fact that um, women and children feel confident enough to come forward and report, and we see that in the increased reporting rates. But the fact that it's still so prevalent is where we need to work stronger and harder as a community and across government agencies. We have very strong partnerships across the government sector with um, a multi-agency protection service, a domestic violence disclosure screen, scheme, the, uh, the hubs that we run in, in two areas across the state to support women and children in the prevention space. So uh, this is just a demonstration of the commitment to our community um, and the support that we provide to other agencies. How does that number compare with other months? Have we seen an increase in these offences? Well, this is the first time that we've ran Operation Storm, so we'll be able to compare quarter on quarter um, as, as it goes forward. So it's hard to, to do that, obviously, at the moment. What I can say is in 22-23, uh, the rate of domestic abuse matters reported to SAFOL was over 22,000. That is increasing, that is of concern, um, but as I say, one of the indicators may be a competency reporting, um, but we have to work hard to uh, gain that confidence because we, are, we do understand it takes some victims approximately seven attempts to come forward and report matters to police. Um, part of that is the cycle of violence that they're caught in. It makes it really difficult and they are rightfully a fearful of the situation they're in. But what I can say is when they do come forward, we can provide um, protections around them. We can, we can prosecute offenders. Uh, there are intervention orders available to them. So we seek to help protect and reduce those threats to them as much as possible. With this operation, what's your end goal? What's, are you hoping to reduce numbers? We're hoping to have an impact in terms of prevention um, and stop things from escalating and to improve the safety of women and children and send a strong message to people who have, for example, 
who are on bail or who have an intervention order, but it will be policed and we will be following up and they will be held to account. That's the important thing. If you have an intervention order, you need to know it's going to be enforced. Um, we know that evidence suggests that um, a lot of people who have intervention orders, um, or who are subject to an intervention order, I should say, um, pushes the boundaries. They test those boundaries as to how far they can go. And each time that they are successful in getting away with that, they become more emboldened. This is the dangerous time when things will escalate out of the intervention order into a more serious consequence. That's what we aim to protect and reduce. And we'll also work with um, referring, and we have in this instance as well, been able to refer some of those people to um, prevention programs and rehabilitation programs. Time will tell if that's successful, but it's another opportunity to change behaviour. In terms of the support you can provide to victims if they do come forward, can you talk us through what some of those measures are? Well, some of them are, um, they start with you know, intervention orders. They can escalate to um, holding the perpetrator to account by court processes. There's referral, which is really important to other agencies who can provide safety advice, um, alternate accommodation. Um, they Sometimes it's financial and, um, support that's required. So there's a range of other services. We can act as a gateway to them. Those services also act as a gateway into us. So it's a whole holistic approach about the opportunities to protect people, especially women and children. And in terms of reporting, are you seeing more third parties come forward to report domestic violence? I mean, once upon a time, the mentality was, you know, what happens behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. But are you seeing more people who are observing domestic violence reporting that? You certainly are. And I think as the community became aware over the years, um, and there was obviously a huge campaign about third party reporting, that's still a very important part to us. And it serves to give us a broader picture and an intelligent picture of where things might be happening and somebody doesn't have the, the confidence or even the ability to come forward on their own, particularly when it relates to the safety of children. We see a lot of um, this, thing, um, sorry, we see a lot of this come up on court lists every day for those who do court. Is, is it kind of worrying mm -hmm. that it's out of your hands once, is it out of your hands once it goes to the court system or are you trying to, um, you know, tell people that we will still be following Alone. Well, we participate in that in terms of prosecution and supporting uh, victims through the court process. But the undertaking within the court is a matter for the courts. We respect that process. Um, we know where we stop in terms of our role in that process, but we know where we can still support victims through it. Um, so, no, I'm, not, I'm very comfortable with that process. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.